Hi, my name is Paul Harris. I'm a director of the Office of Research Informatics at Vanderbilt University. I'm uh, delighted to be with you today presenting the past, present, and future of REDCap. REDCap started in 2004 here at Vanderbilt University, really around a simple problem that we noticed. A lot of our teams uh, in the research enterprise were collecting and managing data using tools that didn't adhere to best practices regarding security. Things like audit trails and uh, uh, automated uh, username and password controls, et cetera. So our hypothesis was that these researchers were not bad people. Uh, they, were, they were simply not adhering to best practice because they didn't have an easy way to get the needed tools. The problem that we had at the time was that we had many diverse types of research studies who needed data management support, but we had very few resources for customized programming, very few people that could help. So what we did was we, we came up with a solution uh, that, that basically uh, including cr cr creating a metadata driven approach. In other words, if we could get the data about the data uh, that, uh, that needed to be collected and managed for a specific study uh, in an organized way, then we could build one program. It could read the instructions for that study, morph to uh, meet the exact needs of that study, but also be ready to support the next study and the next study and the next study. So uh, it worked quite well. Uh, we launched our first uh, Red Cap project here at Vanderbilt in 2004 in August. And, and then we soon started telling people about it. So, so uh, we had a lot of meetings with a lot of researchers where we talked about the benefits of this new platform that was web-based, easy to configure, free to use to the research teams. It, it, uh, it included HIPAA compliance, so security rules, and it was very fast to, de to develop and deploy. We would talk to individuals about the fact that the, the data entry screens, one of which is here, were, were easy to navigate and, and, and use as humans, not computers. We also talked about the fact that once data were captured, that uh, we can make it easy to get the data out into common statistics packages, even uh, taking care of things like de-identification, as you see in this screen. A lot, of, a lot of those meetings, they all ended sort of the same way. The researchers would say, yes, this, this actually looks very good. I'll have my coordinator send you our data requirements. And at that point, we had to say, well, wait, uh, what we want is to support many studies by, by writing new features and functions into this new platform called REDCap. If, if my team does all of the study metadata translation, then we can't do that. So we're gonna te instead teach your team to create the uh, study metadata. We'll load that into the program and that way we can keep working on the programming pieces and make it much better uh, as we go. That approach worked well. Uh, by the end of the year, we had about 20 projects that were using REDCap at Vanderbilt. Uh, that's not bad when you're considering building them one at a time. So we thought we were onto something and people were starting to tell their friends. One of the interesting things that we found when we queried people about how difficult or how easy the, the creation of these projects were and how long they, they expected and those sorts of types of questions. We asked uh, those 20 research teams at the end of that first year, one, one simple question, uh, and that was, did it improve? Did the REDCap platform improve your science? Every single uh, individual answered that, that it did in fact improve their science. Uh, and and uh, our hypothesis there was that it really wasn't the web-based screens that improved the science. It was empowering the research teams without uh, needing to get a programmer involved for change management and extra costs. It was, it was the ability to empower the research teams with creating their own study uh, data dictionaries that really improve the science, which again, hopefully improves health. So, um, one of the other things that we noticed just about every time we talked about REDCap what was people would say, well, it's really fantastic, but, but does it do something? Does, does, it, does it act like this? Or is there a feature around that? Uh, many times there was, and we just had to sort of get to it in the demonstration, but, but other times there weren't. And those are the types of uh, signal that we listen to to make REDCap better. Good ideas from, from people that are actually using the software, those would inform new modules we would try to make those powerful features as easy as possible for the researchers, knowing that if it were too hard to set up a project, they would go back to using other methods. And so a big, big part of who we are, listening to those end users and again, trying to simplify where we can. Um, 
one day uh, someone asked, hey, this is great. Can I use it for my basic science studies? Or then another day someone asked, can I use it for operational needs? And, and that was sort of an epiphany for us that even though we had created it for clinical research, uh, REDCap really didn't care if we were if, if we were collecting data about a patient or a, or, or a, a, a mouse or, or a person or, or uh, you know, really anything in between. And so what we found is that building generalizable tools like REDCap being neutral about what people are using it for, uh, people will be very creative and, and use it in ways that you never thought. So it's used, used that way a lot at Vanderbilt. Here's our current metrics. Uh, the same studies that were, that were put into REDCap in 2004, they actually still live in our, our production version of REDCap. And, and as you can see by some of the statistics on the screen here, we have roughly about 1,800 concurrent users at a time. Uh, each day at Vanderbilt, each weekday at Vanderbilt, and a whole lot of projects that are now being supported. So it's really, really helped the research enterprise here at Vanderbilt. And again, it may, remains free and, and available for any student, staff, or faculty member to, to use uh, for, for their study or their operations. A uh, couple of quick points about the present. Uh, we, we decided that, hey, this is working well at Vanderbilt, we should start a consortium. So so we started a consortium about 2006. This is from a paper that we published in 2019 about that consortium. Uh, basically, it's sort of the same model that I described earlier, just at a bigger scale. We're always listening for how to improve. Uh, once we once we listen and try to try to develop new features and functions, we build that, test it, disseminate it at Vanderbilt. Uh, and then on the right side of this uh, figure, we disseminate it out to a larger consortium in, in the REDCap community of informatics teams. They share it with their researchers. And then again, the magic happens. This is great, but will it do this? This is how we, we get that feedback to start the cycle again. We're at 5,000 plus uh, institutions. It's available at no cost to academic, nonprofit, and government organizations in the world. Uh, and with those 5,000 institutions, we know of at least 1.7 million users, uh, not counting survey participants that have benefited from using uh, the REDCap platform. This is really important, not from the perspective of lots of dots on the maps in lots of countries, but it's really important for those key, key principles I mentioned earlier that really smart people using really solid tools, uh, when they encounter new problems, they'll innovate. Also, many users using the common platform like REDCap trying to solve important and common problems, they'll collaborate. We've seen that over and over again in the consortium. We have uh, many examples of this. I won't go into detail here. Many of the details, uh, sorry, many uh, examples of this in the last year with COVID-19, as you can see, uh, I pulled out a few articles that cited use of REDCap in, in very high profile journals uh, from Google Scholar. Here's one from Google News where uh, an operational uh, need to support the uh, healthcare enterprise is being served by REDCap. So a, a lot of interesting use cases, a lot of smart people innovating. Uh, so, so just a couple more slides uh, talking about the future. We almost never talk about things that are going to be in the future in terms of functionality until we're really confident that's going to work. I feel uh, confident enough in ver version 11.0. That, that I can say that uh, we're about to release, and by the time you hear this video, uh, may be released, uh, certainly at Vanderbilt, uh, new features and functions called smart functions and smart tables. Uh, you can see those here where we're starting to be able to sort of script the um, tabulation of data as well as uh, visualizations of data. Those can be dropped on uh, surveys, those can be dropped in emails, those, those can even stand alone in, uh, you know, in, in either or public pages as, as we're looking at supporting uh, program level uh, visualization and operations. Uh, not sure exactly what the future will hold after that, but uh, if, I, if I had a crystal ball and, and I was trying to guess, I would think that uh, we're probably going to start focusing even more on, uh, on adding additional language abstraction and support. A um, lot, of, lot of good stuff ahead in the consortium. This doesn't happen uh, by accident. So I want to thank uh, everyone uh, on this committee, everyone uh, in, in this group, in the audience for being part of REDCap and making it uh, the success. Thanks especially to uh, Michelle. Thank you especially to Michelle and, and uh, Victor and the uh, REDCap Spanish uh, committee for, for putting on this event and really appreciate the opportunity to participate. Thank you.